see you all this morning on this beautiful summer's day. So, only a couple of announcements. Um, there's no Bible study tomorrow morning. In fact, there won't be one until mid-August because of the long weekend and stuff like that. So, please look for that in your bulletins. Um, coffee hour sign-up actually is going really well, but we still have some space available for September. So, if you can sign up, please do. Our next Spanish service, again, is not going to be tomorrow. It's going to be on July the 31st. We have it every other week now at 7.30 in the evening. Um, if you wish to volunteer to drive the workers to and from the church, that would be wonderful. Or even help with coffee hour, that would be great. Uh, it is a wonderful service. Um, we have a lot of great music, a lot of great singing. And uh, the guys really enjoy the fellowship and enjoy being back at church, frankly. So um, you can imagine, I know that you guys would miss church if you weren't here. But um, for them, you know, it's been maybe a month or two since they've been at their home church in Mexico. And they love coming here. So it really is a wonderful service. So if you can come out, please do. I think that's it for announcements. Any other? Oh, good. Our processional hymn is 259 in your blue hymn books for the fruit of all creation, number 259.
us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated for the first time? The first reading is from Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to 19a, entitled Jacob's Dream at Bethel. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I pro have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm appointed for this morning is part of our parts of Psalm 139. You can find it starting on page 896 in your green service books. Psalm 139, verses 1 to 11, and then the last two, 22 and 23. So just do it side to side, as always. This side uh, starts with 1, this side will continue with 2. Then when we get to 11, we'll just go back and forth. Then. It's not a big deal. So 1 to 11 and then 22 and 23, we'll start with the epistle side. Lord, you have searched me out and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uppermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O oh God, and know my heart. Trust me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. God of mystery and power, even our minds and hearts are the veils and signs of your presence. We come in silent wonder to learn the way of simplicity, the eternal road that leads to love for you and for your whole creation. We come as your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us, and in his name, Amen. And now the second.
The second reading is from the letter of Paul to Romans, chapter 12, beginning at the 12th verse. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory of what to be revealed to us. For the creation awaits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who had the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly for the awake of adoption, redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel grounds will end at number 88 in our blue hymn books. Come now long expected Jesus and we'll sing the first two verses before the gospel and three and four afterwards. Hymn number 88. among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, the weeds appeared also. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Well, do you want us to go out and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat also. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. 
This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. ourselves, wow, what a visual this is, right? I mean, we can just see the, the ordinariness of, well, you know, we've got some crops and some weeds, and so we'll gather these up and those up and separate them, and that's all fine. But then the second part of the parable, where Jesus explains what's going on to his disciples, is far more graphic, and I think allows us, our imaginations at least, to run a little bit wild. When we kind of think of the fires of hell and all those sinful people going there and the good people going and getting carried up to the angels in heaven. And I think that's a really nice sort of, you know, way to wrap it up. But I think this is, again, emblematic of exactly what happens in the ministry of Jesus. Even those who are there, even those who follow him, even those who do stuff with him and see all these great miracles, don't really know all the time what these parables are. They don't really understand. And I don't think it's uncommon. I mean, I have a garden, and I don't know where weeds come from. I don't assume that my enemy goes and sows them in my, although that might be a good explanation for my wife. Um, but the fact is that these kind of things happen all the time. And sometimes I think, this is just sort of the way things are. This is the way our society is. In the time of Jesus, it wasn't unusual for people to, to die over something that we would consider today to be an incredibly easy thing to treat. Infection and all sorts of things were, were everywhere, and they didn't have anything in antibiotics, they didn't know exactly what to do, they didn't really think that you know, flowing water was that great of an idea. And so, really, death was everywhere. And this example of your enemy coming, the guy next door who wants his wheat to be the one that everyone buys, coming and sowing weeds, sowing terrors within your stuff, just seems to us to be utterly ridiculous. Is that what people spend time doing? Is that how they spend their free time? Is trying to destroy other people? But then I realize that that's exactly what does happen in our society, right? There is this sort of underbelly of what's good for me is bad for my neighbor. And what's bad for them is really good for me. So if I cause them harm or cause them some sort of calamity, then I benefit and I gain from that, and so that's what I'll do. There are people who spend a lot of their time wondering how they can make someone else fail so that they can succeed. And so perhaps part of this parable is Jesus just laying out the truth that is unspoken, is that there are always going to be people who don't like it when you succeed. There are always going to be people that when you plant good seed will still want you to fail because they think that it's a reflection on their failure if you succeed. And so they want you to fail because it makes them look better. And Jesus says this is the temptation that the devil has. This is the temptation of darkness that we see all around us. When someone else is struggling, when someone else is failing, when someone else isn't doing as well as us, we think it makes us look better. We think that it makes us look more successful. And so we let it happen. We don't help them. In fact, sometimes we even sabotage them because, well, because of our own shortcomings. The message of Jesus is do the exact opposite. It's to stop and to help. It's to help our neighbor, even if it means they'll be more successful than we are at doing something. It means helping someone who has less than we do because perhaps they made poor decisions and we didn't. 
But you know what? The way of Jesus is not the way of this world. The way of Jesus is not sowing seeds of weeds in someone else's good garden. It's not cheering for someone to fail. It's not walking by someone who needs help. The entirety of the ministry of Jesus is stopping and helping others. Whether they're more successful than you or less successful. Whether they're healthier than you or more ill. It doesn't matter. Because we are supposed to be that good seed. We are supposed to be planted by the Son of Man. We're supposed to be the ones that grow up. And beside us all around are going to be weeds. Temptations to make us do the worst thing we could possibly do. Temptations not to be the best us. Temptations not to be who God wants us to be. There's always going to be a weed. There's always going to be an annoyance. There's always going to be something niggling at us to say, no, don't help that person. If you don't help them, you'll be more successful. If they look worse, you'll look better. It's not how it goes in the life of Jesus. He stops and helps everyone. His disciples and his followers say, why are you helping that person? The Pharisees say, why do you eat with outcasts and sinners? They say, why do you eat with that person who is of ill repute? Why do you go into the bad sections of town? Why is it that you do these things that don't benefit you and only help others? And his answer is, this is what I'm called to do. This is what I'm supposed to do. So if we're the body of Christ, if we truly are the embodiment of him in this world, we continue that work. Helping those who need help, whether they're more successful or less successful than us. Aiding people who just need us. Who need a helping hand. Simple and difficult things, it doesn't matter. Jesus shows us the way. We are that good seed. And there will always be weeds around us. But instead of being torn up with the weeds, as some would have us do, we grow with them. We'll be separated from them. We can only be called to grow in the full stature of what Jesus wants. Let us be disciples. Let us grow into that full stature and do what Jesus does, which is help all those we see who need help and become the body of Christ in this place. Amen. We continue on page 189 in your green service books with the Apostles' Creed. Will the congregation please stand? Page 189. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please turn with me to page 112 in your green service books. Litany number three, the prayers of the people. Page 112. Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who call themselves Christians, that we may become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Linda, our primate, Anne, our Metropolitan, Andrew, our Diocesan, and Marcella, our area bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, that they may remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Charles, our King, for the leaders of the nations and all in authority, that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives. Lord, hear our prayer. We 
pray for this township of Rock and for those who live here, the poor and the rich, the elderly and the young, men and women. Pray for Lily, Tom, Joe, Carol, Joan, Charlotte, Kayla, Jessica, Kenny, Gary, Becky, Adam, Paul, those living in long-term care facilities, we pray for the people of Ukraine and refugees from around the world. In our Icon Cycle Prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Central Africa. That you will show your good will to all. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the victims of our society and for those who minister to them, that you will be their help and defense. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those preparing for baptism, and for those recently baptized, that they may be strengthened in the faith. Lord, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints who have found favor in your sight from earliest times, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known to you alone. And we pray that we too may be counted among your faithful witnesses. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue on page 191 with the Confession and Absolution. Page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to this holy table. Let us now confess our sins, confident in our Lord's eternal forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now stand in the presence of our Lord as we exchange the peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
we look toward the glory that you have promised. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Service continues on page 198 in your great service books. We do this in prayer number three. Page 198. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life for all your creation. You made us in your own image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices to proclaim the glory of your name.
page 214 in your Green Book of All Temple Services. Will the congregation please stand in prayer? O oh God, as we are strengthened in these holy mysteries, may our lives be a continual offering, holy and acceptable in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God, generation to generation, in the church of in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God with passive understanding. Keep your hearts and minds and all the love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 450 in your blue hymn books. You call us, Lord, to be number 450.